Hello, welcome. Today we will be talking about point cloud processing with Erdos Imagine. All right, here we have Erdos Imagine. We have the ribbon interface, and if you look on the terrain tab, we have the point cloud tools. Here you can find all the tools needed to process your point clouds. So let's look at how to open a point cloud. So one of the ways we can do this is just file open, and just like any other file, a raster, a vector, you can open a point cloud layer. Another really easy way is to simply right click and select open point cloud layer. And from here we can open any any file that has an LAS format which is pretty standard. Uh, there are other formats that we do support. So I want to go ahead and just select the dot LAS. I'm going to select this point cloud right here. Open it up and you can see that it defaults to color coded by elevation. Now it is a point cloud, so it doesn't display like a raster. And if I zoom in, you can see that we just have points. And it may be a little difficult to tell uh, what's going on, but we can change that. <clears throat> so when I open the point cloud data set, you will notice that up here on the ribbon interface, there is an orange highlighted tabs that make available point clouds uh, tools. So if I had opened a raster data set, you would have raster tools available. If I opened a vector data set, you would have vector tools available. In this case, we have point cloud tools. You know, one of the first things we might consider is how to display our point cloud data. And over here on the far left, we have color by elevation. If I select this, then we have other options. And uh, typically, point clouds come with an intensity band. And again, the intensity is measures the strength of the return of each signal. Um, we can zoom in here and you can see very clearly here's a residential area with some roads, uh, buildings, and this must be tree canopy. Uh, we can also display by return, um, whether it's a first, second, or third return. And we'll go back to elevation. And also, in addition, we can display in 3D. There is a way to, we can just by using my mouse wheel, I can zoom in and I can rotate on its edge. And one of the things here is to make the display a little bit easier to see. We have this uh, tool here that will increase or decrease the point size. So if I increase the point size, it will update in both the 2D and the 3D view. One of the things you can do is you can also do a, a follow. So anything I update over here will be, that view will be updated in the 3D view. And you can do a clip as well. So if I zoom in and roam around, you will see that it will just display a clipped area. Let me zoom out over here a little bit. And then anything we change over in the 2D view will also update in the 3D view. Let's see, so let's get rid of the 3D view here. Um, I'm going to close. Now let's, when we take a delivery from our vendor point cloud data, it typically happens that we receive a number of LAS files. So when you download or copy those files to your local disk drive, they may look something like this. Um, to deal with each one of these one at a time would take a long time to do that. So inside of Erdos Imagine on our Terrain tab we have this tool called Commands. And what you can do is when you first take a shipment, a delivery of your LiDAR data, you might want to run it through something like this. <clears throat> and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I have some raw data here I'm just going to grab my very first one. For this data set, I want to do a few things. And I want to do several things to each one. So I don't want to spend the time that it that it would take to do that for each LAS file individually. I want to create a batch process to process all of these at once so that I can start my project work. So in this case, we're going to compute pyramid layers and spatial index. This will give the data set some varying levels of detail so that when you zoom in and out it'll make the rendering of the data a little smoother. Um, it's always a good idea to compute statistics so that if you need to do some type of analysis 
the statistics will already be there. In all cases, you definitely want to add um, horizontal projection. You need to know where your data is on the Earth's surface. So in this case, we're going to identify the horizontal pro uh, projection. This is state plan. So if I just hit my S key on my keyboard, it'll take me down to where I need to go. And I'm going to grab state plane. And then if I hit my G key, this is in Georgia, and hit return, I can identify my projection system. And now also I want to define the horizontal units. In this case, we're going to use US survey feet. Now I have this set up for one. If I want to apply these same settings for all of the files that have been delivered to me, I can use the batch tool. Here we can just add the remaining files that we want to add. I can run this now or I can wait till later and run it. Um, so I've already done this. I don't have to really go through the process. I'm going to open my file browser and you can see all the LODs, all the files that were um, extra files that were created. So now I can just simply take my selection of LAS files and drag them into my viewer and you'll see that they'll populate over here on the left contents minimize my file browser I uh, will zoom out here so this is all the tiles that I have and I have about 17 here so I have all these into my viewer I just did a drag and drop so let's say for my project I need to merge these together and then maybe create a subset of that so I can start my work so to merge these together, uh, you can simply select all of the uh, files in your contents menu over here. Underneath, um, on your point cloud tab and tools, you want to select merge. And it will automatically populate all of those into the merge tool. So I have them all in here. I can very easily just name a file and then hit OK. Uh, I have already done that, so I'm going to open up my merged tiles. So we'll open that again. Here we go. So now I just have one file. And this is all of my point cloud tiles merged together into one file. Um, one thing to note here, when I cover the way the LiDAR is acquired, you can see this in this data set. We have a, a lot more dense point spacing here in the overlap areas from adjacent flight lines. So the airplane flew this way, north to south, and it went south to north. So in the overlap area, you're going to have a lot more dense uh, point spacing. So if I just zoom in to one of these real tight, you can actually see the scan lines. So you can see that these scan lines are this way and these scan lines are that way. But here we have double scan lines and then maybe if I increase the size you can see it better. So this is a scan line and so forth. So I thought that would be good to show. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to subset this. I'm going to open up an acquire box and this just gives me a utility to draw a box. From the point cloud suite I am going to go under tools and select subset. The subset utility opens when I opened my inquire box, a box appeared in my viewer, and here it is here. I'll move it so you can see it. So if I want to subset an area, let's say I have a project and I'm doing some, you know, watershed delineation, or, or uh, I can just stretch this box out, and I want to subset this area here. In my subset tool, when I hit from inquire box, my, my upper left X and Y and lower right X and Ys will update. If you watch it, there they go, they're updated. Now I can specify my output file, hit OK, and it'll create a subset of this data set. So I already have that. Just close all of that. So let's open up my point cloud data set again. See, I put it in here. So here we are. We have our point cloud data set. It's subsetted to our project area. And just based on the elevation data, I can see my drainage I want to delineate or, or whatever. To help me out here, I'm also going to right click and hit open raster. 
In this case, I will be using an ECW. That's a compressed format. This is county ortho photography, so I've compressed it into one. And then I've also subset it so I can do my project work. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. It appears on top, so what you do is over here is move it down. Let's go find an interesting area. I like this area right here. This will kind of help me get things set up. So I have some buildings here. Let's see. I want to select my LAS file. Go to point cloud. And I can make them thicker. I can change it so that the intensity. So I get a sense of, you know, everything looks good. And I'm going to do some work. So let's say I am interested in vegetation. Well, as we recall, when I display it by returns, anything after the first return is likely associated with vegetation. So if I turn off my first returns, you can see that all these points are very closely tied to vegetation. You have a few in here, you know, bouncing off the sides of the houses. But for the most part, we have all of our points um, closely associated with vegetation. If we zoom in here, we can look at this house. There's no points there. So in this case, if I wanted to just extract out these points, because I know they're vegetation, I can do that. I have my point cloud file here. I can just go to the filter tool. And from filter, you can go over here to the return tab and say, okay, I want, and I'm going to create a new point cloud. And in that point cloud, I want the points that are the last returns and the in intermediate returns. If you want to do it differently, you can also select them like this too all the way up, but I'm gonna, this is easier, so I'm going to just do it like this. And there, and then you can just name your output file. If you want to clip it further, you can clip it further. So I'm going to name my output file and just hit OK. I could do that, and I would have a point cloud file that just represents my vegetation. So I know where my vegetation is now based on the LiDAR data. Another option is to, I'm going to turn this back over to elevation. Another option here, we can use the classify tool and using the classify tool, we can take your point cloud data and you can specify the parameters needed to classify both man-made features such as buildings and then vegetation. And also from here, there will be ground points. So I can set these parameters. If I don't know what something is, I can consult the help page. And this talks about the classify tool for point cloud. And here, you know, when I first started working with this, I really didn't know what plane offset was. So I could read about it. I didn't know what roughness was. I can read about it. And then the reality is that you would have to run a few processes to see how your point cloud data is going to behave. I mean, if you have really dense point cloud data, it's, it's gonna, you're going to get some really good results. If you have data that's not so dense, then you're, the results just aren't going to be, they're not going to be as good. So when you talk to your vendor and they're extra, um, collecting point cloud data for you, make sure you tell them that you want your point cloud data dense. You'll probably pay a little bit more for it, but you're going to get a lot more for it. So I can run this, and I've already done it for this data set, and just to show you what the results would look like, once you run your classification, you can color by classification. And I can do my drop down here, and I can show you the classes. The ones that we're going to pay attention to here are the ground, the different vegetations in the building. So what I like to do after I do a classification is turn off my ground, view it with the imagery, and actually it looks pretty good. I have red buildings green vegetation. So this would be yet another way you could get uh, your vegetation and your buildings. Now if I wanted to create a bare earth, remember because LiDAR has the multiple returns, it can map the surface of the ground through the tree canopy. So I can create a bare earth from these points. And you can notice that there are no points where there are houses and all of these points in the tree canopy are actually on the ground. And we'll talk about this in a future webcast on how to convert these ground points to an DEM and then contour it. And then also how to convert the tree points into a vector polygon representing tree canopy and also with buildings as well. So stay tuned for that. So this is classification. Um, a few other things to be aware of. So you have some profiling tools. If I wanted to select a polyline profile, I could very quickly, let's see, come up here, draw a line, just to show you what it looks like. And you'll have a couple of displays over here that will have the, the full range of your profile, um, and then a side view, 
and a front view. So if I hit up here on the profile roam, you can move this box down your profile. You can stop it at any time. And if you wanted to do measuring, you can do that. So you can, I can measure the slope of the rooftop or how high the house is, the roof line is, but you get a good sense of profiling. So you have that capability. Um, another capability is you have a rectangle profile. So zoom back in here. So another capability you have is a rectangle profile. So I want to grab my rectangle profile. I'm just going to draw a box around one of these houses here. And click in here, zoom in a little tighter. Just do this so it makes some sense. I'm going to take a little cross section of this roof. So you can see that this roof actually has a couple other pitches on it. The rooftop, the ground, if I wanted to go in and measure this, I could. I can move my profile box around to the next house if I wanted to. If I wanted to come in here and select some of these points that are classified as vegetation, you can select those. All right, real quickly here, I want to show you a few other things before we have to go. Uh, one of the other neat tools on the terrain is this RGB encode. You can take your existing point cloud data set your LAS file, specify an output, and encode the RGB values from an overlapping image. And I have one of those, so let's go open point cloud, RGB, and here's our point cloud. Let's try to zoom into that same area. So here's our point cloud. If I wanted to bump this up so you can kind of see, and you can tilt this 3D and so forth and roam around. So that's RGB encoding the point cloud. Um, one of the other neat things is, I will show, quickly show this, is we have our compression format, and we're going to show this in our next webcast on how to create these. So if I select this, zoom in to the area, the compression actually displays a lot better than the original LAS. I mean, there's not a whole lot of rendering issues. You can tilt this on your, on your side and make it 3D. Zoom in with my mouse wheel, move it center click or center hold down and move it. So you have that capability. Um, so this is RGB encoded point cloud data. Now if you recall the semi-global matching, the point cloud data from stereo, we're going to cover this in a future webcast. And I have just just so you have an example of of what that looks like. We're going to go to LAS file. This is some pretty neat stuff here. So I want to zoom into these buildings, and you can see how tightly, how nice these look. And this is again a point cloud, RGB encoded, and it comes from stereo. And what you don't get from this that you get in LiDAR is the multiple returns. So you're not going to get that bare earth um, through the tree canopy mapping, but you do get a very dense point cloud that can be used for feature extraction and so forth. Well, that's all I had today, so thank you for listening and watching. I hope you have a nice day.